Hello beautiful people. So today I wanted to do a nice short polyphonic singing video and maybe start with three warm-up exercises, jump into some vowel sounds and in some previous videos I've been getting more specific questions about where do I place my tongue, what am I doing in the mouth, all that, all that jazz and to be honest, you know, I've listened to a lot of pretty much all the polyphonic singing videos that are actually online in terms of the tutorials, you know, haven't of course, it'd be like a magnitude of real, authentic, traditional songs that I listen to, but it's a little bit harder to learn from them. So, that being said, I'm going to try my best to uh, tell you what's happening when I'm doing certain vowel sounds and also maybe refer to some of the tips that I have heard from other YouTubers. So, let's jump into some warm-up exercises, starting with the E noise, starting with the laddle laddle. And this is just getting the, the mouth muscles to loosen and relax a little bit. Laddle 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 and we can do la la yi la la you and you can always alterna um, alternate this with ya ya yi ya ya you similar thing as before so la la yi la la you 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 we can also do bao bao i kind of think of it like a bao bun you know it's vietnamese bao buns and just Letting it out, so just letting the resonance start to build. And lastly, we can really work on strengthening the vocal and lung capacity, seeing how long we can sustain a single note for. And I like to use the n, like the n sound. And to be honest, I, my tendency is to be quite a shallow breather, especially the last couple of days I've noticed I've pretty much only been breathing from here. So I'm curious though, who of you have tried the Wim Hof method? Because I've been trying to incorporate that in my morning routine, just the four minute exercise where you do the breathing method and go into push-ups. So that might help because it actually gets more oxygen to the lungs and to the brain. So. Anyways, let me know if you've tried it, and if you haven't, look it up, if you want to. So, let's just sustain the end sound. Probably could have gone longer, but I'm not feeling it today. I think the longest I held it for was a minute or 58 seconds or something with my teacher that I saw a couple of years back. So let me know how long you can sustain it for. I'd be curious to know. So let's jump into some vowel sounds going from the E to the U. So with that one, really I'm not doing much of my tongue, it's kind of just somewhere in the middle pointed towards the roof of my mouth, but it's not pressed against it. And really, as you can probably see, most of what I'm doing is mo really subtle movements with the mouth, and so it's going more from the E, sort of what that would look like, to the U. And it's very subtle, and once again, just play around, explore, but really that's more about the mouth movement. So we can jump into the more sound really slowly and you notice that instead of going like this to this straight away it's more of a more like more so
I might try that one again. Also, if I'm looking over there, it's got these two very beautiful lorikeets just playing around near the fireplace. So. Then we can do the L sound. And so with, with this one, I actually do get the tongue and I pull it to the back of the mouth and I'm creating like a all, all. So my tongue is like curled up and I've pulled it back. And it might, obviously don't stress too much about keeping it in that position the whole time. That's kind of how I start. And instead of going E, U or more, it's a all, like a tucking sound. <clears throat> Another thing that I've heard, a tip that I learned from somebody else on YouTube is to get the tongue if you really want to start you know, with a certain technique and kind of work from there uh, and aren't really interested in kind of just exploring it yourself, I mean just going with whatever, getting the tongue, pushing it, the tip to the roof of the mouth, kind of where it gets concave and trying to create the overtone from there. So I'm going to try and once again you're focusing both on constricting around here but also the very subtle micro mouth movements with your lips so So you can see it does come out. Sometimes I find that it kind of blocks the pathway a little bit, but it's a start. So now I just want to grab the laptop. I'm going to take it to the stairwell, which is right behind me. I want to see if it creates any more resonance uh, as I walk down the stairwell. So, because you know, I find the environment can change how the overtones are filtered. Do you want to come too, Henry? All right. So you can see maybe a little bit more. Um. Lastly, so you might have only seen a subtle difference there, but here I definitely can notice. And lastly, in the great outdoors. <laughs> hey, Han. All right. Let's try this. Mm. And see, I noticed there actually that it is not as potent and you can probably hear that it doesn't really filter as well. So that's why it's very important where you actually start practicing. And I've said in previous videos, I recommend practicing either somewhere with nice acoustics. So for me, the room upstairs has great acoustics, the stairwell, a hallway, the car, if you have your license, and also in the shower or the bathroom is absolutely ideal. So practice away. Let me know how you go. And thank you again for watching. Much love. Bye.